Hey there! Spring has sprung, and I can't wait to show you how to make these pretty berets with a cherry blossom motif. They're super easy to make, and also super pretty when worn. Let's go! For this project, you will need the following. 4 ply milk cotton yarn in 3 different colors. Feel free to switch out the colors really. Your hat, your rules. A 4.5mm crochet hook, a darning needle, and a pair of scissors. Get everything you need, and we can start! To begin, take the dark colored yarn and make a magic circle. Everyone has their own way of making a magic circle, and this is just how I do mine. So I wrap the yarn twice around my index and middle fingers, and I then pick up the lower line, twist it to the right, and pull the working yarn through nice and tight. Now that you've got your magic circle, work a single crochet, then work three triple crochets. This is one, and then another one. So this is two. And three. Once you've got three triple crochets, form the first petal by making a single crochet. There's your first petal made of a single crochet, three triple crochets, and a single crochet. So repeat this four times for the rest of the round. So once you get to the end of the round, stop at the last triple crochet right here, then pull the loose end to make the circle a bit tighter. Just a bit. And then remember the first single crochet we made? That's where we will work a slip stitch to close this round. There you go, and just lock it in, pull it, and for the loose end of the magic circle, just dug it nice and tight as well, so there's no hole in the middle. And that's the center of your cherry blossom. After cutting the yarn of the previous round, change to the light colored yarn and make a slip knot. This is how we will join this yarn with the previous round. So take the flower and join your yarn with any of the middle triple crochets. So there's your petal and this is the middle triple crochet. Join your yarn right in the middle going to work a single crochet, like so. And then for the next step, as you can see, we have like the middle or the base of each petal where we worked like a single crochet earlier. So we're going to work three double crochets in there. So this is just one, and then two, oopsie, hold the loose ones in place, and then the last one, three. So you've got that, and then again, work a single crochet in the middle triple crochet of the next petal, just like so. Now I'll just repeat this pattern for the rest of the round. At the end of this round, just work a slip stitch into the first 
single crochet you've made. We will be starting round 3 mid petal, so chain 5. This marks the other half of the last petal we will make later. In the next stitch, just make two double crochets into the same stitch. Now that you've got two, just chain two and then into the next stitch, work a slip stitch. So this is half of the petal. Now we will continue to work a complete petal. To start, chain two, then make two double crochets into the same stitch. As you can see here, we have a single crochet that we worked in the last round. So we're going to work three triple crochets in there, but first we have to work chain one. And then we proceed to make three triple crochets into the next stitch. Once you have three triple crochets, just chain one and into the next stitch, make two double crochets. Chain two again and into the next stitch, make a slip stitch. So there's the complete petal. Just repeat this process for the rest of this round, and I'll see you back here to finish this last petal. So we're almost at the end of this round. We've completed four petals so far, and now we have to finish this last petal. To begin, just chain two, and then work two double crochets into the next stitch. Chain one. And right at the same stitch where the chain five started, just work two triple crochets in there. So this is one and this is two. Now you've got your chain five here. Just look for the fourth chain. It's this one for me. Um, yeah. So insert your hook in there and make a slip stitch. Now, you might be worried about this hole, but don't be, because that will close up later. There's your round three. Since we ended mid-petal in the previous round, we have to work two slip stitches into the next two stitches to reach the first chain space. This is the chain space. Just work one more slip stitch in there and into that same space, 
work a single crochet to begin the round. Now chain one and move towards the next chain space of the next petal and work another single crochet. After that, just work three chains. Here we have the three triple crochets we made in the previous round. Just We just need the middle. So we're going to work five double crochets into that middle triple crochet stitch. All five of them into the same middle triple crochet stitch. And then chain three. Now we're going to move towards the next chain two space. Just work another single crochet. And just like how we did earlier, we're going to repeat the same process. Chain one and then single crochet, chain three, five double crochets chain three again and then single crochet for the rest of this round. Now that we have reached the last part of this round, we have our chain three here. We're just going to join the ends together by making a slip stitch into the first single crochet we made. So just work a slip stitch in there to close this round. For round five, we will be working a lot of stitches into these chain spaces. So start with chain one and make a single crochet into the nearest chain one space. After that, we are going to jump into this chain three space and we're going to work four double crochets in there. So this is one and then two and three and four. We have here five stitches, so we are going to work just two double crochets, one for each of the next two stitches. That's one and two. Now what we're going to do is we're going to skip the stitch below by making chain four. So skipping the immediate next stitch, we will be working two more double crochets into the last two stitches. Right here, and then this chain three space, we're going to work four more double crochets, just like what we did earlier with the other side. And finally, this is the chain one space. We're going to work a single crochet in there to close this petal. This chain four space will play a big role later. But for now, just finish this round repeating the exact same pattern. Now that we are about to finish this round, just work a slip stitch into the chain one we started this round with. Just like that, and then lock this round. We are now ready to cut this yarn because we're done with this particular collar. Just pull it right through, and there goes the cherry blossom motif.
Now for the next round, we are going to use the third color. So begin with a slip knot. And then we are going to join this with the piece that we made earlier. So it would be great to start at the very bottom of these double crochets we need. So it's right here. So this is the bottom of the petal. Just join your yarn in there, holding the loose ends in place so that we can just stitch over them and not weave in those ends later. So work a single crochet to start. It's right at the bottom of the petal, just right here. And for the rest of these double crochet stitches, we're just going to work one single crochet for each. So we're going to continue making single crochets into each stitch of the double crochets we made in the previous round. Just keep going until you reach the chain four space. Now, here's the chain four space. Um, I actually created this space so that we can make the separated petal of the cherry blossom. So we're going to work a triple crochet into this stitch that we skipped earlier. So work the first triple crochet right there and then work two more into that same stitch. So that's a total of three triple crochets into this stitch that we skipped earlier. Now we are going to continue working single crochets into the succeeding stitches, just like what we did on the other side. So one single crochet into every double crochet below. So work your single crochet while holding the loose ends in place. So we can just simply stitch over them. Now that you have reached the stitch in between two petals, which is a single crochet, just work a double crochet into that middle stitch. And for the next four petals, just continue working the exact same process that we did earlier. At the end of the round, simply work a slip stitch into the first single crochet you made. And that closes this round. We are going to begin round 7 with chain 2. And then into the succeeding stitches, we are just going to work one double crochet for each. Once you get to the middle triple crochet, we are going to work two double crochets in it. So it's like increasing in this particular stitch. So that's two stitches into the center triple crochet. And then we will just continue working 
one double crochet for each of the succeeding stitches. Once we have reached the base of the petal, which is this double crochet, we are going to work two triple crochets in that particular stitch. So that's like a triple crochet increase into that double crochet stitch from the previous round. After that, we will just carry on with our double crochets, one for each stitch until you reach the triple crochet at the center once again. So again, we have this middle triple crochet, we're going to increase in there using double crochets. And then we will work our way downwards once again. And once we reach this double crochet from the previous round, we're going to increase using triple crochets again. So basically, it's the exact same process for the rest of this round. So this round ends with the triple crochet increase. But before you work your last triple crochet, I want to show you how I seamlessly end this round. So just start the triple crochet as you would, then insert your hook into the back loop of the first chain you made. So it's right into this loop. Insert your hook right there. And then pull up a loop. And then yarn over and pull through three of those loops. And then just finish your triple crochet as you normally would. Now, remove your hook. And if you can see, this is the first complete double crochet you made. Insert your hook from the back side. And then place that loose loop on your hook pull through. Just like that. You will see it forms this bridge connecting the two ends together. That will be considered as a stitch. So make sure to loosen it up a bit. We will now work three increase rounds. But first, let me show you how to start a stitch for a seamless join towards the end. So as you can see here, this is right where we pulled our loop earlier. Just work a single crochet into that same stitch, and then chain one. This will be considered as your first double crochet. I have a stitch marker here, and I will just mark the back loop of the single crochet that I made. lock that stitch right there we will be using that back loop later now I will make my second double crochet and this is the double crochet from which we will be pulling the yarn through later 
I'm going to place another stitch marker just so we won't forget. By the way, using these stitch markers is completely optional. I'm just using them for demonstration purposes. If you're new to this kind of method, you can use them, but if you're not, well, you can skip the stitch markers. With the stitch markers in place, I can now continue with the round. So I'm going to work another double crochet, and then another right into the next, stitch to make four double crochets. We are going to work in intervals of four for this increase round. Into the next stitch we are going to work an increase. So that's two double crochets into that same stitch. So just continue working four double crochets before making an increase. Basically, we will be repeating this process for the rest of the round. I will see you once we're about to join the end together. Here we have our second to the last increase. So you will know if you had the right count, if you're going to end a round with an increase and much later a decrease. Now we have reached this bridge that we made by pulling the yarn through earlier from the back side, we are going to work just one for now and then an incomplete double crochet for the increase. We have here our first stitch marker. That's the back loop of the single crochet. So insert your hook there, pull up a loop can now take this off and pull through three loops and finally the last two loops. So that's your second double crochet for that increase. Now we are going to insert our hook from the back side once again and place the loop right here and pull through. So that's how you seamlessly close a round. Now we will jump to the next round. So we will start with a single crochet and chain one, which is counted as your first double crochet. We will place a stitch marker into the back loop of the first single crochet, and then we will work that double crochet. Again, place a stitch marker so that we don't forget where to pull up the loop from behind. For this round, we will work in intervals of five. So now we have four. This is the fifth double crochet. So we will work an increase into the next stitch. Just repeat the exact same process for the rest of the round and join the two ends seamlessly, just like what we did earlier. After this round, you'll make just one more increase round with intervals of six. Say you're done with all the increase rounds, the next step is to make four rounds of double crochet stitches maintaining the count of the last increase round, which is 144. So just one double crochet into each stitch for four rounds in total.
this is how your hat will look once you're done with the increase and normal rounds. You've got four rounds here maintaining your 144 stitches and we've also joined them seamlessly. This is how it looks at the back. And in front, it shouldn't be as obvious as it would if you used slip stitches. Now, we are going to start with the decrease rounds. For the decrease rounds, we will start with intervals of 10. So work your single crochet. Again, place the stitch marker, just so we don't forget, into the back loop of the single crochet. And then chain one. We move on to the next double crochet. Place another stitch marker and continue working on the eight double crochets left before we make a decrease. So far we have 9 double crochets, so let's work one more. Yep, that's 10. And now we are going to make our decrease. That's yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and pull through just 2 loops. In the next stitch, work another incomplete double crochet, forming three loops on your hook, and then pull through all three at once. That makes your decrease or double crochet two together, and you will repeat it for the rest of this round. Just like how you would end with an increase earlier if your count is right, it's the same with decrease rounds. You will end with a decrease. To join the end seamlessly, start with your first incomplete double crochet. Then for the next incomplete double crochet, you won't pull through the loops just yet. You'll insert your hook into the back loop of the single crochet first, and then pull through three loops. So now you have your three loops again on the hook and just pull through all three of them. Just like before, you will insert your hook from the back side of the hat, place the loop on the hook and pull it through. Once you're done with all the decrease rounds, so you've got these decrease rounds right here, and you will end with intervals of 7. The next step is to make one normal round. So we started with a single crochet and chain 1, and then we will just work one double crochet into each stitch for the rest of this round. So we have reached the end of this round. We make our final double crochet without seamlessly joining the two ends because we can simply slip stitch into chain one and then chain two to begin the next round. The last part of this project is making the band. 
And for this, we will be working front and back half post double crochets for four rounds. For the back post half double crochet, just pass your hook through the double crochet below with a stitch at the back of your hook, pull up a loop, and then pull through all three loops. For front post half double crochet, you'll have the stitch in front of your hook and just work a half double crochet as you would. And then just repeat this process for the rest of the round and for four rounds in total. Once you've reached the end of the round, you've got your front post half double crochet here, so just work a slip stitch into the second chain. Just like that. And then you can see how it kind of makes this stretchy band. Once you're done, it should look like this. It's kind of stretchy, and it also adds a nice design to your hat. Here we have the finished beret. So we've got all four rounds of the front and back post half double crochets. And as you can see here, this is where we joined each end with a slip stitch. And in front, it looks like this with the cherry blossom motif at the center. For the full written pattern of this project, head on over to Rippler.com. I've included a link in the description below. Also, if you made this beret and have plans of posting a pic on Instagram, don't forget to tag me, The Morning Hooker, because I'd love to see your work. As always, thanks for watching!